what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by JJ Zacharyson from FanDuel, who's here to tell us who to buy and sell as we head into week number nine. What's happening, JJ? Not too much, man. Definitely ready for this uh, trade deadline to finally pass, so we know what we're working with through the rest of the season. Just a few hours away, so hopefully no players we talk about are affected, and I don't think they will be. So let's start with some players to buy, and that takes us to New England. We are buying James White here this week as Patriots are in Baltimore on Sunday Night Football. Why do you like James White? Yeah, look, James White's a guy who's going to give you consistent uh, production week in and week out. So far this year, he hasn't ranked worse than RB23, but he hasn't been better than RB14. So he's giving you that consistent PPR production. But all the while, White has only scored once, despite the fact that he's second in the NFL. Well, third, if you count uh, a tie at the top between Julian Edelman and Mike Evans in the NFL in red zone targets. Uh, based on his yardage totals, he should have about 1.2 more touchdowns than he actually has. So he should have found the end zone more than once to start the year. But then on top of that, New England's been steamrolling teams, and James White is still involved in this offense. What happens if they're in more of a negative game script or a neutral game script where they have to use their pass catching back a little bit more? I know Rex Burkhead is there, and he can impact James White in some way, but James White also has the upside if something were to happen to someone like Sony Michelle. As we saw last year, James White was a really, really usable fantasy asset. So I like James White as kind of a low-key buy right now. The Patriots games haven't been all competitive, as you mentioned, and getting to a portion of their schedule where it could get a little bit more tough, which allows them to use James White in the role that we're used to seeing him in, which is a very effective one. James White could be out for cheap right now, so pounce before it's too late. You mentioned the trade deadline affecting some of our players, and that takes us to Le'Veon Bell. Rumors have circulated on Tuesday morning that the Jets may trade Le'Veon Bell. I think it'll be tougher than that, but anything's possible, so Kevin Garnett told us. But Le'Veon Bell is a buy candidate for you. How come? Yeah, so this past week, it was good to see that he was involved a little bit more in the passing game with Sam Darnold under center. He had about a 17% target share. He's still seeing about 86% of New York's rushes. We know that he's going to see a lot of volume in this backfield. That's the good news. The other set of good news is that they finally have a great schedule opening up for them. They get the Dolphins this week, then the Giants, and they get Washington. They have Oakland on the schedule, Cincinnati, and then Miami again. That's over their next six games. Those are all plus matchups for Le'Veon Bell. So given the fact that we know the volume will be there as long as he's still a New York Jet, uh, the matchup sh uh, should also help him be productive. For me, it's only been a matter of time before Le'Veon Bell got going in fantasy football. And maybe that matter of time is still coming. But the Jets' schedule eases up so much kind of the opposite of the Patriots, where Le'Veon Bell, as long as he remains in New York, is going to find a rhythm. Remember, he played half this season without quarterback Sam Darnold. I think better days are ahead for Le'Veon Bell. Our final buy this week brings us to Los Angeles, where Mike Williams has positive touchdown regression coming, right? He should, yeah. I mean, last year he had uh, 10 touchdowns on 66 targets. He really outperformed in the touchdown column, but now he has 50 targets and he hasn't found the end zone. I mean, based on his yardage total, he should have about two and a half touchdowns, so he should positively re regress there. But his peripheral numbers really aren't that bad either. He's seen at least 20% of the Chargers' targets in three of his last four games. He's seventh in the NFL at wide receiver in air yards, and he has the highest average depth of target on this Chargers team. So things should bounce back for Mike Williams. I think right now is the time to buy. Everything went Mike Williams' way last year in the touchdown department. We haven't seen that thus far this season, and that's why things are going to look up for him. Once again, a window closing fast, so make sure you pounce soon. All right, let's move on to the players that we're selling here this week, JJ, and that brings us to Cincinnati. With Joe Mixon on a buy this week, I know you're normally buying players that are on a buy. This week you're selling Joe Mixon, and I get it. He scored a touchdown, so just, just sell that. Yeah, exactly. He finally had a good performance, and we know that Joe Mixon isn't seeing the volume and really even the snap share that we expected him to see this season. He's only seen about 50 to 55% of the team's snaps over the last few weeks. It's just how they're utilizing him. Uh, so I think that right now, just given the fact that you know he hasn't been used all that much, his, his receiving share is still under 10%, his target share is. Uh, it's an obvious time to just get rid of Joe Mixon uh, because we know that Cincinnati offense isn't moving the ball very well. Knowing how bad that Cincinnati offensive line is, Joe Mixon, certainly a sell candidate. Somebody I was staying away from during drafts this season because of how brutal Cincinnati's offense could have been. And our worst fears have been realized. Joe Mixon, clearly someone to sell this week. Moving on, we get to Kenny and Drake. And I know a lot of fantasy owners are buying Kenny and Drake with a new situation in Arizona with Chase Edmonds and David Johnson banged up. Drake could even get the start on Thursday night football against San Francisco. 
You're pivoting the other way. How come? I am. If you look at the upcoming schedule for Arizona, they get San Francisco this week. That's a tough matchup. They get Tampa Bay next week. That's uh, they've, they've given up the fewest rushing yards in football. Then they get San Francisco again. So that's obviously a tough matchup. And then they have their buys. So that's four weeks of bad opponents slash not usable performances because he's going to be on a buy for Kenyon Drake. And by the time that he comes or by the time we're out of that buy, David Johnson could be back, should be back. Chase Edmonds, he's out for a few weeks. That's what's been reported. He could be back as well. Then all of a sudden you're in a mess. So I think Kenyon Drake, he might, you know, he might see a lot of volume uh, while David Johnson's sideline. Uh, but once he's back, he's not going to see a, a whole lot. He's not going to be very usable, even if he does see that volume in those matchups. That schedule is really, really tough going forward for Arizona. And at some point, Edmonds and DJ should be back in action, rendering Kenyon Drake nothing more than a handcuff. One final sell this week, and that's the New England Patriots defense, who is a top 10 fantasy scorer overall on the season thus far. But as we said earlier in the show, in a positive light for James White, Patriots' schedule is getting a bit tougher, which means the New England defense shouldn't be putting up 20 points a week anymore, I, I think. Yeah, look, the New England Patriots defense is very good. Uh, it's not that that we're looking at this situation and saying, oh, they've only played bad teams, therefore uh, they're going to be worse when they play good teams. I mean, to be fair, though, of the seven opponents that they face, six of them rank in the top eight in fantasy points allowed to opposing defenses. Even when you remove New England from that equation, because that obviously skews things a bit, each of those offenses rank in the top 11. So they have faced a cake schedule. And upcoming, they get teams like Baltimore, they get Houston, they get Philadelphia, they get Kansas City, uh, So it, it, and they get Dallas as well. So they're going to face a tougher schedule. So if you can sell a defense right now at, at its peak, and you can get a usable running back or a wide receiver, a very usable one, given the way that New England's performed, I think selling them makes sense. Now, with that being said, they get Buffalo and Cincinnati in the fantasy playoffs in weeks 15 and 16. Those are two pretty good matchups for the New England Patriots. So if you're looking good, if your team's looking like it's going to make the playoffs, then I think you can hold New England and it's fine to, to not sell them. But I think that you should at least uh, go to, to other owners in your fantasy league and, and and see what they would give you for New England Patriots defense because I think that the valuation, just given that they are a defense, will probably be all over the place. And it's just interesting to see what you can get. You're absolutely right. Given that they are a defense, who knows what these desperate teams will offer? Even teams that are in the playoffs that are like, hey, looking at that late season schedule against those teams that you mentioned, it'll be interesting to see what you can wind up getting for a defense like New England's. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel. Hurry up. JJ, best of luck on your waiver wire this weekend. We appreciate the time. Thanks, Greg. Take it easy. Tomorrow, Jim Sonis will join me as we take a look at Week 9 from a DFS perspective. Have a great night, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.